Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? I know there's still a few people outside, but I think it's, um, it's important to get going. We have a very full program today, um, and also some of our speakers in the morning have, you know, they have to leave, so I would like to get the show on the road. Uh, my name is Rob Vanderhilst. I am the department head of the Department of Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Sciences, and it's my distinct pleasure to welcome everybody here to the symposium MIT on chaos and climate. There's actually a lot of chaos at MIT all the time, um, and that makes it such an exciting and dynamic place, uh, but this is uh, really about chaos and, and climate in, in a pure sense. It's organized by the department, and in particular by the Lorentz Center of the department and the colleagues um, of EAPS in the, Loren in the uh, program of Atmospheres, Oceans, and Climate. I also want to, like, uh, want to offer a special welcome back to the Course 19 alumni. Um, many of you, of course, have worked very closely with uh, Jules Charney and at Lorenz. Um, and I also, in particular, want to wel welcome, a very warm welcome to the family members and the friends of uh, Jules Charney and at Lorenz. And of course, I want to welcome the online audience as well. Uh, this, this, this meeting today will be broadcast live and so there will be many people all over the world probably following us here today. Today's celebration of the work of two giants in atmospheric science, Charney and Lorenz. They were both born in 1917, and they are a reminder of the value of basic science and its contribution to society. Uh, there's a very rich history. Um, about uh, 100 years ago, um, Garnel Gustav Rosby, he was a preeminent meteorologist at the time, he founded the meteorology program at MIT. Um, and then in the post-war era, era um, he invited and recruited uh, Jules Charney and Ed Lorenz in what was then called the Department of Meteorology and Course 19. Actually, Course 19 didn't formally start until 1936, and it lasted until 1981, when it briefly was called the Department of Meteorology and Physical Oceanography. Um, so Charney and um, Lorenz, they really helped launch the modern meteorology um, and, and also transform many other uh, disciplines. Now, following the merger in 1983 between Course 12, which was Earth and Planetary Sciences, and Course 19, which was then Meteorology and Physical Oceanography, um, you know, we still, of course, celebrate the work by these two giants, and we still benefit here at MIT and all over the world from the seminal contributions they have made. We're very proud of the history, of course, as, uh, of course, uh, 19. It, pro it, it mostly precedes my time. I came to MIT in the mid-90s, so most of course 19 is distant memory for me, but I really enjoyed uh, learning a lot yesterday about the history and, and the beautiful stories. Yesterday was the informal part of the program. We he heard many warm and beautiful stories about life and work with Chani and, um, and Lorenz. Um, it's my understanding that uh, in most of those meetings at the time, there was always a lot of wine involved, and uh, the parties were always very uh, convivial. Um, I hope the party yesterday didn't last for too long, and that, uh, that we're all fresh today to hear the, more the, the scientific contributions of these giants in the field. Before we start with that scientific program uh, that uh, celebrates the work by Chani and, uh, and Lorenz, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce um, Professor uh, Ernie Moniz. And he will give us the opening keynote remarks for today. And he has to leave stripped at 9.30, I was told, so I will keep his uh, introduction very short. If I start reading his CV, then I can easily fill the next 20 minutes. Um, and I'm not going to do that. Uh, but let me uh, say a few words. Uh, Professor Moniz is the Sisal and Ida Green Professor Emeritus of Physics and Engineering Systems. And he's also the special advisor to President Raphael Reif. He was on MIT's faculty from 1973 to 2013, when he became the, um, uh, the director, or the, uh, sorry, the secretary of energy uh, under Obama. Um, when he was at the MIT's faculty, he was the head of the department also of the Department of Physics. Um, and he's also the, um, the, long, the founding director of the MIT Energy Initiative. So without further ado, Ernie, I know the time is uh, precious. So Ernie Moniz. Mercifully short. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Rob. Uh, although, yeah, I guess that one's working, this one's working, I'm not quite sure, but uh, something's working. Just use this one, all right. Uh, very good, thanks, Kurt. Um, the, uh, the only thing I would, 
I would beg to differ with his characterizing these few remarks as a keynote speech. This is, <laughs> this is continuing yesterday's informal set of remarks, uh, and, uh, but I really, sorry? Even better. Yeah, but I really appreciate the uh, opportunity to be here, and uh, uh, Kerry was uh, uh, instrumental in, uh, uh, in contacting me, and John and Rob. Uh, I must say that, uh, as Rob mentioned, uh, we, we initiated the MIT Energy Initiative back in 2006, and uh, it was a, uh, it was and it is uh, an enormous enterprise here at MIT. And I just want to say that the, that EAPS, uh, the department, uh, has been a tremendous contributor, uh, both below and above ground, uh, in terms of the uh, the activities uh, there. And, and we'll 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 come back to that. Um, being here for this um, celebration of uh, Jewel Charney and Ed Lorenz. Uh, and chaos and climate, I have to say, of course, you know, and I'm not going to go through this, I mean, uh, of the enormous uh, contributions uh, that they made, uh, seminal contributions in, uh, in basic science, but of course, uh, mentioning uh, chaos and climate uh, would, would also characterize them in today's world as political scientists uh, with what's going on in DC. Uh, not enough climate and too much chaos, uh, but, uh, but maybe we'll come back and comment on that as well. Um, uh, why I'm here uh, is uh, a little bit strange, perhaps, and I'm not a member of EAPS, but I do remind you, we are celebrating a mathematician and a, and a physicist, and I'm a theoretical physicist, so uh, I feel uh, quite comfortable with their, uh, uh, with their, with their work. The, uh, I, I will repeat what Rob said. I understand that several uh, family members are, are here uh, from, um, from professors uh, Charney and, and Lorenz, biological families. Uh, I also want to acknowledge, uh, uh, I believe also some of the family, the daughter of um, uh, Professor Phillips uh, is here as well, who, who worked with them. Just to say that uh, the, uh, having the biological families here is great, but also having the professional families here uh, is terrific, and I, and I know uh, that that's a prolific a bunch uh, in, the, in the fields. And I just want to say, as a, as a faculty member uh, myself, at least uh, sort of a faculty member today, uh, that uh, it's such a privilege to be able to spawn both biological and professional uh, families. And of course, uh, uh, it's uh, the, uh, the professional family, we have the advantage that they become self-sufficient on roughly five or six years and not decades. Uh, uh, so uh, that's, really, that's really important as well. The, uh, uh, again, uh, you, you all know uh, the, the roles of, of, uh, of uh, Charney and Lorenz in terms of establishing uh, physical explanations uh, for, for cyclones, to establishing dynamical uh, meteorology, advancing computational methods, uh, advancing chaos theory, introducing the uh, well-known butterfly uh, notion uh, and the like. Uh, 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 clearly, uh, fathers of the Weather Channel, uh, one of the uh, great, great contributions uh, to, uh, uh, to, our, to our society. Um, but let me just say a few words uh, uh, about chaos and climate. Uh, uh, let me say first with, uh, with climate, and here I'll go to the situation uh, as we see it in terms of addressing uh, climate, uh, climate issues. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, obviously, uh, we need, and many of the people in this room uh, continue uh, and will continue uh, the necessary job of continuously advancing uh, the science relevant to, uh, to climate change, uh, to global warming, to climate change, to the, uh, to the impacts uh, throughout our, throughout, our society, throughout society. Uh, uh, and, uh, but unfortunately, in my view, there's been a confusion um, promulgated uh, in terms of the status of that science with regard to the clear need for risk management in advancing solutions, uh, advancing policy. Uh, the, uh, some of the arguments used would never hold water uh, in the context of, say, risk management in the corporate world. Uh, and so, so I think there's no doubt about having to move, to move forward. Now, uh, we all know that the, the president on June 1st uh, did uh, announce the intent uh, to withdraw from the uh, Paris Agreement, uh, ironically, perhaps, on the day after the next presidential election, uh, which is the first day in which that is uh, technically 
uh, allowed, but of course, in the meantime, uh, shall we say, slow rolling uh, some of the programs that might uh, mitigate the, uh, the, uh, the implications of, of, of global warming. But I, I, I think the thing that I want to really emphasize uh, uh, very clearly is that uh, uh, in the real world, the economic world, the business world, et cetera, there's no going back. Uh, and that was evident by the immediate reaction uh, to the president's announcement where 22 governors uh, where the mayors of the largest cities in another, I forget exactly, maybe 15 states, and maybe most telling, 1,700 businessmen and women uh, came forward and saying, look, we're, we're on this track. Uh, the reason being the writing's on the wall, uh, that we're heading this direction. The pace and the scope may be unclear, but we're heading in the direction of, of low carbon. Uh, and um, and uh, certainly business people are not going to make capital planning decisions that have decadal implications, multi-decadal implications, on the basis of what will be, uh, frankly, a short-term uh, bump in the road. Uh, I don't mean without consequence, but nevertheless, in, in the longer term, a short-term issue. So this just emphasizes the clear importance of continuing uh, both to develop the science uh, that will inform us increasingly about the, uh, the, the impacts that we can expect from continued major greenhouse gas emissions, as well as the solutions uh, to mitigate those effects, which are largely clean energy, but we can't forget also enormous land use uh, uh, requirements that need to, be, uh, need, need to be addressed. And I might say on the mitigation, uh, the discussion once again actually is uh, frankly not at the level uh, that I'd like to see in the following sense. When you see the wonderful projections of how technology is going to lead to dramatically uh, less CO2 emissions, what you're almost certainly being shown is the reductions pr predicted in the electricity sector, not the projections in the transportation sector, in the industrial sector, uh, in the uh, building uh, sector, and so we need a much broader program, a much broader view, number one. And number two, it also says to me that we are going to need uh, very, very large-scale carbon management in addition. And a lot, very, very large-scale carbon management comes, for example, to some of the below-ground activities uh, that, uh, that EAPS has, has, uh, has been and, and will, be, will be pursuing. So, uh, so I think, you know, uh, it's... Uh, I guess I'm focusing on the glass half full uh, because I, I do believe that uh, the research agenda, uh, the policy agenda, uh, and frankly, the agenda of the private sector will keep us going uh, in, in a prudent direction in terms of, in terms of uh, risk management. Now, the, uh, I think a, a, a theme of this discussion as well uh, is, uh, and here again, I want to acknowledge the, the uh, Lorenz Center and its efforts to continue uh, the uh, understanding how, how the climate uh, works uh, scientifically, that clearly uh, uh, Professors uh, Charney and Lorenz, uh, 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 you know, were, I mean, represented the basic research paradigm uh, that is so important and so core uh, to MIT's agenda and the agenda of, of the other great uh, research universities. There was an in interesting little book, if you haven't uh, seen, I recommend it to you, written 20 years ago. Uh, by Don Stokes called Pasteur's Quadrant. And uh, it basically divided the research world uh, into, guess what, quadrants, uh, with uh, one direction uh, uh, being the, the seeking fundamental understanding, the other direction uh, being uh, uh, considerations of use, and uh, the basic research, the, the pure basic research quadrant, uh, fundamental understanding without direct regard for use, was called Bohr's quadrant, uh, appropriately, since I'm a physicist. Uh, uh, but of course, it, for you, it could also be called the Charney and Lorentz uh, uh, quadrant. But I want to emphasize that the next block over, seeking fundamental understanding, but driven by use considerations, was called Pasteur's quadrant. And I would posit that uh, those quadrants do not have a bright line between them. And I think that Charney and Lorenz, uh, in their work, clearly understood 
and 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 advocated for the the issue of the use quadrant as well, based on and and supporting basic basic research, uh, basic research. Uh, and here at MIT, I would I would say that uh, again we have that spectrum, uh, a very poor. Uh, uh, demarcation of those, you might say, in the School of Science at Eeps, et cetera, a lot of that Bohr quadrant or Charney Lorentz quadrant, and in the uh, in the uh, uh, School of Engineering, for example, represented perhaps by a step out uh, in the Department of Energy Basic Energy Science uh, 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 Office, the idea of basic research, but driven by visions of what can be. Uh, in that case, uh, advanced advanced technology uh, uh, development. So I think that's the kind of environment that that we need to continue to nurture uh, at MIT. That kind of collaboration across across those quadrants, uh, and uh, and uh, both advancing our understanding of how the world works, and at the same time, uh, underpinning what can be critical solutions to critical problems. Finally, let me just emphasize uh, in the context of an MIT citizen, um, uh, faculty member for a regrettably long time in a certain sense, uh, that um, it's not only the issue of sustaining that commitment on fundamental understanding, but it's also essential to sustain the norms associated with that activity. And that is uh, very importantly an openness to ideas, an openness to people who come from all different directions. Uh, both of these are not completely, in completely good health uh, these days, uh, particularly, frankly, in the political establishment. So I just want to emphasize that all of us, I believe, have the responsibility uh, as members of civil, civil society whose future really depends upon sustaining those norms to continue to stand up for those, to advocate those, and to carry out our activities uh, according to those norms. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a major responsibility. Uh, it's also self-serving in the sense that it's what underpins the way, the way we do our work, but really it is of considerable uh, importance uh, throughout society. So in concluding, just to say again, um, uh, Charney and Lorenz, uh, their work, uh, obviously uh, seminal, uh, and I think on their or I guess just past their 100th birthdays, uh, a very uh, symposia like this, I think, uh, especially involving both biological and professional families, I think are a tremendous opportunity to, for us to focus a little bit, not only on the science, but on the implications of that science, uh, and to make sure we, we, uh, we remain committed to it. So with that, that is not a keynote address, that is a few remarks, and I uh, and, uh, wish you best for the rest of the scientific discussion. Thank you.